Captain Logan also praises the love triangle between Beast and Magneto and Mystique. And I totally agree. Mystique and Beast can chat and play together and both feel trapped by their mutations. They really bond in terms of what they do and how they talk together. And also based on physical appearances. So it's very realistic a teenager relationship. But it also has got depth. And she likes the different mutations of Beast. But he doesn't love his true self and tells her that the human form is beautiful. And so he doesn't love himself enough and hence not her enough. Even though they're both intellectuals and they're both playful and they're both complementary and innocent. And they both feel very hurt and can therefore understand each other. And so he doesn't really, uh, but he doesn't really understand her enough as he doesn't understand himself enough. And so she eventually falls for Magneto as he truly likes her true self. But he is actually hypocritical as he pushes her to be herself, but kind of pressures her into that and actually views her a bit as a sexual object. He just really cherishes this object. He discriminates as well, just in a, in a positive way. So the love triangle indeed was very strong and was one of the best aspects of this film. Although I still can't understand how this love triangle is somehow great. But the one in X-Men The Last Stand sucked. If the love triangles are overused and the thing is just using them well, then how is the love triangle in X-Men The Last Stand bad? I mean, what was objectively wrong with it? Yes, it would influence Rogue and taking the cure, yes, because you realized how some friend of Iceman could just be as close to him as her herself, the same way that Mystique now decides to be herself because she realizes that she can be proud of herself just because Magneto's, Magneto supports her, not really because of Magneto. The love triangle gives the characters perspectives on the issues they're dealing with and the issues for the love triangle but isn't it just uh, superficial that they just do it because they fall for someone else it's still very deep and very three-dimensional so i don't see how that was a problem in x-men the last stand and i still don't see how it was a problem for rogue to take the cure have you ever have a, had a big illness no then how can you say that you just need to learn to live with it that's like being uh, somebody who's completely healthy and then telling somebody who's blind and wants to have an operation to be able to see you should accept yourself the way you are it is easy to say so when the way you are is naturally good that's like that's like an old-fashioned caste system so when you're the king saying to a farmer you should accept the way that you are it's it's being a cunt the biggest problem for me in this film is the character of Magneto. He isn't very likable, his arc is rushed and badly set up, and so is his friendship with Xavier. This to me was a big disappointment, because when I first saw the film, I, I really loved Magneto's character in the original trilogy. I hoped that this would be very well handled. And I'm gonna do something worse than denying the Holocaust. Or committing the Holocaust. Or making a Holocaust joke. Or getting off the Holocaust, starting World War One, Or saying that I'm a nationalist, which I am. I'm gonna negatively compare his character arc and his relationship with Xavier to Anakin Skywalker's character arc in the Star Wars prequels and Anakin's relationship with Obi-Wan Kenobi in the Star Wars prequels. Dun 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 dun! I, I don't have to go over uh, My computer's having some... Dun 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 dun! Okay, that's kind of cheesy. Shut up. Dun 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 dun! Okay, okay, I'll just move on. Magneto's obsessed, hateful, sadistic, manipulative, cruel, clever, determined, can be friendly and relaxed and smart. He is a complex character. That's not really the problem. The problem is that he barely changes. He's evil from the start. And that it wasn't. No, he really wasn't. No, nine, yet, no, nay, nah. Whatever. He starts off being distrustful of humans as soon as he discovers he's a mutant. And to be fair, please hear me out here. Anakin already supported the dictatorship in episode 2. However, it was something that Anakin just mildly considered could work. He wasn't like planning to overthrow democracy. He wasn't being disobedient to the de democratic system. He was working to protect it. And he wasn't just like, hey, I might just join the separatist cause. It was like some form of democracy could work. And one that of, of dictatorship. And one that was very different from the one that he supports in the original trilogy is Dire Fader. He was at that point really supporting an aligned dictatorship. Magneto, as the scene retells Xavier, it starts with identifying people. And that is fine. But unlike Anakin, he immediately refuses to work together with humans and wants to have the mutants be their entirely own group. So he's already in t extremely prejudiced from the start. He's not planning to kill humans yet, but he's already totally discriminating and excluding them. But he also convinces Mystique she's better than humans and that she shouldn't in any way compromise. He doesn't have um, mild tendencies of evil. Like Anakin, he's just plain totally anti-human. He's also arrogant and completely prejudiced right when he discovers there are other mutants and he kills the people who helped at the camps and wants to kill Sean. And again, Anakin had his sent people, but he did that in rage in one scene. And this on the other end is his main goal. It's 
more important to him than helping fellow mutants and he only wants to help fellow mutants because they're fellow mutants there's like not what we were promised in the original trilogy that he would just want to help mutants to help people in general no he just wants to help his group he doesn't care about the general cause of helping other people and as soon as he's taken out sean he immediately decides he doesn't need xavier anymore he mainly works together with xavier to get shot that isn't a friendship or heroic he basically does the same thing he did as a villain X in x2 with the x-men he just has an alliance with them because they're kind of colleagues because they now have a common goal and as soon as it's over it's like screw you guys i'm going home also as i pointed out the star sprinkle defense with kyle and again has loads of scenes where he acts noble like when he saves padme's life because he cares for her or saves obi-wan's lives or helps finding the droids and dooku or saves palpatine he unlike vader's has principles and is loyal to the republic and although he often whines about Obi-Wan, he refuses to leave him on to die with Grievous. He saves him from the bus droids. He saves him from Dooku in episode 3. Again, he saves him from falling through the city of Coruscant in episode 2. And Magneto doesn't have one scene where he's nice with regular humans. He's a fascist from the start. And he mainly trains the X-Men to serve his cause and helps them fight near the end to get Shaw. Because when he goes to fight Shaw, the main thing that he focuses on is his revenge. And that was his plan all along. He's just working together with them to protect fellow mutants and to kill Shaw. And this pushing Banshee off was funny, but he could have died. And if that is the nicest team moment you have, a very dark humored one, that is just not very good. His main nice moments are with Mystique, his future fellow bad guy that follows his evil cause and who he's already kind of swaying to it right now, and with Xavier as an ally against the common enemy. Like Anakin, he disobeys him and torches Ember Frost to get information, but here that is all we get. There just isn't much likable actions on his part. Also his turn to the dark side just perfectly demonstrate this, because what causes him to decide to start his own mutant broadhood, well, Shaw holds his speech and he agrees with it. Yes people, just one of his villain speech was enough. We often have that speech where the villain get, tries to get the hero to join him, well here that's all we need for him to join him and become evil. It is like in Bl if Blade became evil in the first or even the second Blade film after he got those offers from his opponents that Captain Logan also talks about, or that Spider-Man just like that would become an ally of the go Green Goblin after he told him that he should become evil as well. Just like that. That that wouldn't be a very complex turn to, to the dark side and wouldn't really make someone all that tragic. Really this makes it seem like the next logical step and the fact that he just kills Sean anyways as he just needed revenge for his dead mom and that he then takes his place perfectly shows it indeed was the next logical step so it was just like all right we can take out Sean together okay he's been taken out now I'm gonna just go ahead and take his place and be evil so all the prequel haters Palpatine was like leave Obi-Wan behind and he said no and when the Jedi didn't make him a master and told him to spawn Palpatine, he still defended them against Palpatine. And even after that, when Palpatine tried to get him to join the dark side, he gave him up to the Jedi. He was at first very defensive of them and he wasn't immediately going to plan to turn evil. And even after that, he at first was crying in the uh, council chamber because he realized that he needed Palpatine because, he all of the, because it broke through to him that if Palpatine died, he couldn't save Padme. He was then totally pondering on it. He was struggling and then he went up there. Then he enraged cut off Windu's hand and then along with the guild of doing that and now that there was no way back he pledged himself to the dark side that's actually a lot more gradual and a lot more conflict and a lot more doubt to turn evil especially when before that Palpatine tried to remove Anakin from his friendship with Obi-Wan and it constantly didn't work with him so trust about the Jedi and Anakin still being loyal to him and still telling Obi-Wan that he had been too arrogant and that he wanted to try to be a good student it was really a gradual transformation Yet Matthew said of that film, hey Anakin, you want to turn to the dark side? And Anakin says, yeah, sure, why not? Even though Anakin only in one scene entertained the notion of a dictatorship where Magneto refuses any work together with mutants and Anakin just killed Sam people in rage where Magneto's main goal is killing people in revenge and he consistently sees them as less. And sorry for turning this into an extended prequel defense, guys, but I'm gonna do it a lot more. His friendship with Xavier barely exists. Again, like with Anakin and Obi-Wan, they have opposing views and fight. Yet, I'm gonna go confuse Smith here and say there is no balance. They have opposing political views and Magneto disobeys him. And that is both cool. Anakin did the same thing. Yet, he totally supports Mystique against Xavier, her brother. And I'm sorry, but that's just not being a friend. Driving someone's sister away from them. And they just don't share that much. People are uh, screaming right now of the scene where Xavier asks him not to kill Sean. But he never considered it. Xavier saves him near the beginning. But Magneto never really saves 
him. He never really tries to help him, he just works together with him to take out Sean, which is his revenge call. They're just kind of allies, the same way he was allies with the X-Men in X2. He isn't trying to do anything good, really. Anakin saved Obi-Wan from falling, just to save him. He saves him from the bus droids, even though it wasn't a part of the mission. He refuses to leave him behind, even when Palpatine orders him to. He saves him from Dooku. He works together with him against Grievous. He helps him uh, get on the creature that he tamed in the, the arena of Geonosis, and then saves him from Dooku there. And Obi-Wan saves him in the bar. Obi-Wan comforts him when he talks of his nightmares with his mother and when he's nervous to see Padme and when he thinks she forgot of him even though he'd thought about her for 10 years. He tells him that she was glad to see them and he's focusing too much on the negative. And Anakin also just uh, tries to really support him and be there for him also because he even goes to the fa droid factory even though at that point he was angry because he felt as though it was his fault that his mother died. But after Padme convinced him he once again helps him and wants to support him. And he even temporarily let Padme go when he told him that that was what Padme would do if he, she was in his position. Yet Magneto is just totally determined to take out Sean. And yes, there is this important scene where Xavier trains Magneto to find his inner peace. But that is near the end when he's already planning to kill Sean. And he in fact just uses the training from Xavier to take out Sean. So it isn't like he takes any wisdom from Xavier or any political views or really values him. He just uses his skills eventually uh, when he will turn evil. And they just once again a kind of master and student. And that's also the difference between Anakin and Obi-Wan. They weren't shown just to be friends by Obi-Wan telling Anakin, hey, this time try not to lose your lightsaber. That wasn't the demonstration of their friendship. It was them actually supporting and caring about each other both ways, mutually. And Defect learns to use the powers based on inner peace while not actually learning inner peace. And he uses his inner peace to kill Shaw while not acting more peaceful. And I didn't mind Anakin being a quote unquote whiny bitch before he became Darth Vader. But to me it is kind of weird that Anakin, while he would be planning to turn to the dark side, halfway episode 3, Obi-Wan teaches him that by remembering the love for his body he can be strong with the force. And it turns out that he uses this to force choke people. It is kind of weird to use light side powers to further dark side goals while being a dark side kind of person and using these while you're on the dark side. The idea that Magneto in the original trilogy when he's slowly draining metal from that guy's blood and killing him in a gruesome way would be thinking about the love he felt for his mother and based on peace and serenity be doing that. I mean I guess it's possible that someone on the dark side could use light side feelings to further dark side calls but that's an idea so complex that that actually would require a whole movie on its own because it just needs commenting on on how strange that is and that needs to be developed showing that it's very unnecessary natural. That isn't just a natural way of character development. And yeah, I agree Magneto, using happy thoughts is an X-Men first class failure. Now, having focused on this as a standalone problem, this is also inconsistent with the first X-Men where Charles describes him as having helped founding the school and at first being his friend, making you think they are at first at least both semi-idealistic. But Magneto here just hangs out with him because they help him achieve his revenge goal. That's it. And the last time flashback, we see him and he really helped Charles and somewhat cared for the wise things he had to say, although he joked about it a little bit, and he cared for the school and his students. Again, I'm not like Red Letter Media Confucius Matthew that expect him to be a saint before his fall, or that I claim that I want balance but don't acknowledge any of the good things he does, but he just doesn't do all that many nice things. But just more than, well... Yeah, I, I just want more than, you. well, you guys can help me achieve my revenge goal. Okay, it's achieved. Screw you guys, I'm going to my evil lair. And his backstory that he grew up in a concentration camp and as a result knew prejudice firsthand is deep, as we saw in the first film. And it is an interesting addition to see that his mother was killed because they were interested in his powers and that this caused him to focus on rage. However, that another mutant did this makes his humans are Nazis black and white thinking less believable because it were mu mainly mutants that hurt him. So this shows that he's just even more taking the place of the people that hurt him and makes him even more hypocritical and makes him less three-dimensional and logical. <laughs> 